Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Black Standard Podcast. This is episode 12 of the Black Standard Podcast, and I am your host, Courtney Ann Wallace. So before we move on, you guys know it's a regular thing here on the podcast. We're going to do our daily mantra. So if you're listening to this on Apple, um, Google Podcasts, Anchor, wherever you listen to your podcast, go ahead and repeat with me. I am happy to be alive. My heart is clean. My mind is open. And I'm ready to receive. All right. So today's guest is actually a good friend of mine. He went to CMU as well. But, you know, we didn't really do the same program. He did industrial engineering. I did logistics. But now fast forward to today. He is a content creator on YouTube. And he still does engineering as his day job. But his channel, it touches on finance, stocks, the investing process, and all of that, everything related to finance. He recently hit a huge milestone by surpassing 1,000 subscribers. And in just a few months, he is now on his way to 2,000 subscribers. So Demetrius, welcome to the podcast. (laughs) Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Big up the Black Standard crew. Thank you. You know, big up the Black Standard crew. And yeah, man, we love the little mantra there. We'll start off the, the whole video. It's it's good. It's very uplifting. Bring a positive spin to this whole podcast. Let that thing. energy in. in yeah, the, man. Energy, yeah, energy, man. energy. <laughs> so as she said, yeah, I'm a industrial engineer by day, content creator by night, mm-hmm. and uh, making money is the goal. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? What do you do in your free time? Like, tell me something that the listeners would not necessarily see on your social media. Do you enjoy movies? Do you? Oh, okay. All right. So as you've heard, industrial engineer works at a power plant. But things that I love to do, basically making videos. (laughs) So (laughs) it's a a hobby of mine since recently. So going out, um, shooting content, trying to make a story out of my normal boring lifestyle (laughs) but (laughs) that's what I try to do and uh, my main aim is not necessarily to be rich or anything like that but I invest to build a lifestyle that I have some flexibility or a lifestyle that I have control over right because when people say freedom and financial freedom and being free like they don't get it because you still have to put in the work to maintain that cash flow, you know? But I I just want to be the one who controls that. I want to be the person who controls all of that. And um, movies, not necessarily. Series, not really. Anime, yes. I love anime. (laughs) I sit and watch a a ton of anime every night. But I need to catch up because recently all I'm doing is just researching new video ideas researching camera gear researching how to make audio better all that jazz that's just me but what's the difference between anime and cartoons like Uh, i I feel like adults call it anime to make themselves feel better about watching cartoons (laughs) all right the thing with an anime it's anime is almost like an a novel or a story so if you're watching a cartoon take for instance spongebob in that 30 minute segment that spongebob is aired they have four episodes that aren't tied together at all. So you can pick up from episode three and you haven't missed the story because there's no story. The story is just that one episode. With an anime, that one, that whole collection of episodes is stringed together. So if you missed one episode, you missed the whole story. So an anime is, is basically a story and it, 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 it is written with more emotions and, and a more character development, unlike a cartoon. So that's, that's, that's the difference for me. Some of it's uncensored too, right? Exactly. So it's, it, anime necessarily doesn't have like an age group for which it, it, it is published for. Okay. So let's get straight into the business side of things. What yeah. prompted you to start a YouTube channel? All right. Point blank. When I first started my YouTube channel, I was a fitness junkie. I remember that. Yeah, man. Gym every day. The first, the, exactly. The first video I published was about doing push-ups and getting a bigger chest. And while doing these videos and going to the gym, it, it, it was good at first. It felt, it felt good, but it didn't feel natural. 
okay. everybody going to the gym i felt shy bringing the camera and i i just i just didn't feel like it was something that was necessarily for me it it felt kind of forced yes i love fitness and all my friends know i love fitness and i i know a ton about it but it didn't give me any room to actually create mm -hmm. so when i started investing and I, I i said why not just try to to, to do an investment video and when i did my first video i said whoa like i have more creative space with this i can i can do what i want there's more flexibility that's what you're saying right exactly but i mean I, there are fitness channels that do amazingly well but mm -hmm. one thing I would agree with you, I don't think in Jamaica, a lot of persons are accustomed to vloggers yet. And so a mm -hmm. lot of times you're in public with the camera and they, I don't know why, but they assume you're taking pictures of them or you're taking yeah, pictures of them. And I'm like, girl, please. <laughs> exactly. The amount of time people tell me to put on my camera, or no cameras allowed, or don't, don't, and don't film in my allowed. store. It's not that it's not allowed. They're just intimidated mm -hmm. because I'm sure that rule was made on spot. But anyway, I've thought about because um, you know I started my channel as well with like restaurant vlogs travel vlogs mm -hmm. and I still want to do that so yes I'm thinking at, and listeners if you're if you're listening to this let me know in the comments but I'm thinking of also making a separate channel with that content because sometimes you don't really want to mix all of your content together on one channel because if I subscribe to a finance channel I'm going to be confused if I see you in Bali <laughs> exactly and that is that is where i'm trying to tie my creativity with finance because if you look on my youtube banner it says finance fitness and travel yeah so I, i'm trying to tie those in i only have one travel video so far and it was a, a portland a portland video and I it's, have one too it's doing pretty good i have around five thousand views but I want to mix storytelling. For instance, you're saying Bali. I want to mix storytelling so I can mix some finance into, for instance, a Bali video Ooh, along with some idea. fitness. I have an idea. You could do traveling to Bali with under 200 USD. <laughs> exactly. No, exactly. No, no, like, no, no, I, have, I, I, have videos, I have videos lined up where it's, it's mostly money challenges yeah how to spend your money so i did a video a couple weeks back about living in i'm um, spending money what i spend in a week in jamaica because i'm 27 year old and i i was so nervous that releasing, video. That releasing video that video. <laughs> i was that so video, nervous i'll put the link for that video in the description box just remind me after this podcast, I'm going to put the, you guys need to see that video. That video is going to rattle some nerves. If you're thinking about moving to Jamaica, go watch that video. But yeah. um, it's been over a year so far because mm -hmm. I've had my channel over a year. So I'm, you're probably like, like a year and a half, right? Yeah, man. How, how has it been so far? Like, you know, making these videos seeing the rewards, persons giving their feedbacks and all of that. How do you find mm -hmm. me so far? All right. So when I was doing the fitness, it was like, I guess maybe that niche or the people that I knew, it was kind of too narrow. It wasn't a topic of importance. So it, the, the reviews weren't necessarily the, the best and it wasn't growing. When I switched to finance, it, it, it seemed like the videos networked for itself. The videos found a new audience and that audience were a set of people that shared my content and they were genuinely interested in what I had to say. And that was basically since this year that I made that change. And I think I was, I think I was around maybe 500 subscribers or something. And when I changed, I went from 500 to right now 1,800 subscribers. Was it this year? Because I could have sworn you hit a thousand last year. Because I remember us talking on Instagram. You mm -hmm. told me that um, you wanted to be more consistent, and you were yes. consistent for the entire year. I don't know if you remember that conversation. So well, I have to. I have to. I have to look back on my last. I have to look back on that video. But if it wasn't this year, 
It was, it was late definitely. last year. Yeah, because I remember telling my boyfriend, yo, my friend hit a thousand subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Um mm, yeah, looking back, yeah. One year ago when I released the first stock yeah. market for beginners video. It was definitely last year. It was definitely but when I hit the thousand views, I'm not sh- I'm the thousand subscribers. Are I'm not sure it? which which video that was. Okay, got but, you, got you, got you. But all I can say is since I made the change, it felt more natural. I had more space to create. Me too. And mm-hmm. and, and and the people who are watching the videos saw that because since doing this, people walk up to me and like, are you a Demetrius Fearman for YouTube? Yo, like, I just opened an investment account just because of you. And on. so when people say Strangers? things like that. Hmm? Strangers? Yeah, man. People that oh, I don't know. <laughs> so, so and unfortunately, I didn't have my camera on me because I want to bring up moments like that to include the audience in my videos because I don't yeah. want to, I just don't want to have them like subscribers. I want to have, like a, a family thing, like a, like a friendship thing. I don't want people to be scared to approach me. I want them to see me and feel like, yo, I'm a bridge that you know. Like I him give I, I him give me stock advice. Like I want that that friendship thing with people. So that's what I want to build. Celebrity. <laughs> I was I was telling Booth um last night as well. He made a post mm-hmm. and I was like, celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, come on, so, both are going good, man. Yeah, he is. Go check out Akeem Booth's podcast as well, guys. Not his podcast, his YouTube channel. It's called Moments by Booth. He does like traveling vlogs, real estate vlogs, all of that. He's mm-hmm. a really cool guy. So, guys, um, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you guys know that last year I actually got my dream car, which is like a 2016 Honda Civic. But Demetrius yeah. here, he went <laughs> all out. He's not just a part of the Honda family. He went and got the accord. This girl. <laughs> I mean, I didn't, to be quite honest with you, my boyfriend prefers accords, but I was like, nah, the face is too, you know, broad. I don't like the mm-hmm. lights. But mm-hmm. ironically, since I've gotten my car, I mm-hmm. fell in love with accords. But congratulations. Yeah. I forgot that. Congratulations. Thank you very and, much. Um, I want to know, or I'm guessing people want to know as well, because you run a mm-hmm. finance channel. So we're going to pry a little bit. Mm-hmm. What's the maintenance like in terms of, you know, costs? Um, that's your first car. Yes. No, it was my mm, first car. Not, not, not really. Not really. But oh, really? It, it, it was one of the first ones that I, I bought basically in my name and everything. So this car oh. is completely in my name. Before oh, yeah. that, I used to be driving a, a 2011 Honda Civic mm-hmm. before that. But no, this one is completely straight out in my name. Everything, insurance, title, oh, cool. everything. Okay. I, it was, this car is my first. I've been driving at school when you used to see me. That was actually my mom's car. Mm-hmm. You saw me in a pickup because I used to drive mm-hmm. my dad's pickup. Yeah, man. <laughs> that was my dad's van. But this one is mine, mine. Mm-hmm. You know? So how's the maintenance and stuff like that? Is it costly? Yeah, man. Like, you know what it is. Like, having oh, a car in Jamaica, having a car in Jamaica not cheap. We know what it is. But um, in my video, when I did it, people tend to say, oh, you spend so much. But when you actually yeah. break down, for instance, insurance for the year, this is yeah, the first car. So. This is the car. This is the first car that, that was insured in my name. And you, and you know, as a first time, Insurer, you know, Probably say not, not really driver, but first time, yeah, insure yeah. a car in your name. You know that the premium is going to be up, 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 up in the sky. And oh. since my car now is a turbocharged car, so they will give you a higher premium because they're thinking it's a sports car. So they're going to let you pay more money. So mine was like approximately 200,000 for the year. To insure it. Mine was 120. 120. So mine. <laughs> so mine was high. But me be in mind that it's a 2019 car. Oh and that's why. It's 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 turbocharged. They are going to charge me approximately 200000 So when I brought that down, and people like, oh, you spend so much money on your car per week. It's like when you talk about insurance, license, fitness, registration, and monthly payments. Per week, this car is basically up like approximately twenty thousand dollars per week to own. 
Huh? We're talking about yeah, guests and services and servicing and everything like that. Because your car is a lot younger, I paid one hundred and twenty thousand, mm-hmm. and um, my my premium this year because I pay yearly like you. Yes, it's gonna be about um because you have a no claim discount that you get when you don't make mm-hmm. a claim. So I should get about one hundred and three thousand. But I mm-hmm. got an offer from my my agent for another package, yes. which was from Guardian um, Group for eighty three thousand. So I'm thinking to. Oh, okay. Or something because after this year, if I do pay that eighty three, will be lower next year. Mm-hmm. Um, but damn, two hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah, man. But, but maybe because I I took the highest the highest package that they have. I think it's the year of your car. That too, that too, and because it's the first car insured in my name. Because previously, when I was driving the Civic, I was paying like what fifty thousand for the year. <laughs> and you know what? So, really? yeah. I've had my license a pretty long time. So I think I got a good deal. I've been driving since I was 17. Uh-huh. I'm going to be 20, 24. I forgot my age. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm going to be 24 this year. So I, I, you know, I got you, you know, most people actually, like me, been driving from what? 14, 15, but Ooh. getting the license like what? 18. So. <laughs> so unofficially for you unofficially yeah so you know you know how the thing guard but approximately with servicing gas insurance this car costs about twenty thousand per week to own i want to pry some more into your finances so Mm -hmm. um i think you know you decided to get consistent with your channel for one year straight you hit one thousand subscribers um i want to know how that made you feel if you know, moving forward with the channel, is it going to be finance related only? I know you said you wanted to make some twists and creativity here and mm-hmm. there, but it's, it's going to be strictly finance, right? Yeah, man. Like the only how I think, or the only path I see this channel going that it is still mixed with finance is, you know, Gary V, right? Yes. Like that to me is one of the end goals. So Gary I want v to do like... Business. <laughs> take 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 you along the way like for instance if i have a business in yeah. the future i want people to see the ins and outs how it's actually like to be a business owner that's why i mentioned me making a separate channel because i have mm-hmm. thought about that i'm currently in the process of getting an assistant so what i'd probably mm-hmm. do is vlog like my daily um mm-hmm. scenes, what i do if i'm going on the road to do a house or anything like that i'd like yeah. that the scenes vibe but you, but you don't need you don't need a second channel for that because it's but still kind of in your niche it's, but what still, if i travel what if i go said, to a restaurant tra- travel 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 with, with with the mentality of sharing finances sharing but spending what I, habits what if i bald like what if <laughs> yeah then show, show your show your down point show like it's not is you're human too you're not going to be frugal all your life. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I thought about, and I think I said this to you, or if it was my boyfriend, I don't remember, but I thought about if it is that I put travel content on my channel, I would probably call it like an out of the office series. So mm-hmm. it wouldn't be that far fetched from an entrepreneur's life, but just out exactly. of the office instead of yeah, making a whole new channel. I thought about that. Because you'd have to be managing three different channels. And if you could pull all that audience, pull all that audience into that one channel, and whenever you think you have enough traction on one channel that it can influence the other, then maybe that's when you should think mm-hmm. about changing. Yeah. That's what, that's what I would do. So yeah. I want to have this channel as a catalyst for other channels in the future. So if I decide to say, yo... I'm gonna start a cooking, a cooking, a cooking um channel like you, like because I, 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 I'm not gonna say I love to cook, but you look I like can, you can do a thing. I a can thing. do creative things in a the small, kitchen. A, a yeah. thing. I've, I've seen I can, it. <laughs> I can do creative things in the kitchen. So maybe in the future, if this channel has enough influence, then I can use it to build the other channel. But for now, finance is my thing, and I just want to involve storytelling with the finance. So as you see, maybe my last two videos, the one with the 27 year old I spent in a week, mm-hmm. I had a vlogging aspect to it in which I actually show you going to work, eating, doing the, the things that I speak about. So you're right. hearing me narrating in the back 
but I'm actually doing it on the screen. And it's the same with this video now. I released a video of a guide to buying your first car in Jamaica. And uh, and, uh, that's what I basically did. So the first part of the whole video is basically a vlog style. Went to my friend's dealership, actually saw somebody buying the car that I was talking about and uh, interviewed that person. And then, yeah, the video, 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 video going good so far. Released at 10 o'clock. I'm going to watch it. Yeah, my release at 10 o'clock on right now with 117 views. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> with 117 views right now. Yeah. So still not as good as the last video. It's like, you know, the ranking. Yeah. Both of 10. So, okay. but, so, so let's see big, how it goes. At the the end big of the day. question. The big question. Mm-hmm. Are you yes. monetized as yet? Not I yet. We're very, How very close. Like, you know, it's 4,000 hours, yes. right? Yes. Currently, I think I'm at three. Th- By the end of this video today, maybe around 3,600. Maybe around that. So it's like 400 more to go. And then we can start collecting our 10 cents from YouTube. <laughs> point. <laughs> <laughs> reparations for yeah, all those man. free voluntary videos you guys have been getting <laughs> yeah, man. you can anyway, finally start to get some change in the pockets huh? yeah I'll, I'll i'll definitely be bringing you back on the podcast when that happens don't worry <laughs> <laughs> yeah man. All right, so guys um if you guys watched or listened to the podcast with me and bianca we actually spoke about my opinion on career choices in jamaica and i'm gonna ask you the same question as well like Mm -hmm. being a youtuber or a content creator rather what is your take on career choices in jamaica compared to the rest of the world because for me i feel like a lot of young people in other countries are becoming millionaires a lot faster and it's because Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they don't actually use social media to like browse and snoop around and they they actually use it to Mm -hmm create businesses create channels and believe it or not even the silly overlooked things you have people starting youtube channels about dog walking challenges like just stuff that they enjoy and i feel like there's a shift in the professional space because one time you would have to get a corporate job to make certain amounts of money but with the internet yeah you're making more than corporate at this point because everybody uses youtube Everybody, well, not everybody, but a lot of people are on TikTok now. So what is your take on the whole career choices in Jamaica? Young people starting to get on YouTube, get on TikTok, mm-hmm. stuff like that. All right. So first, let me just tackle the career choices. And this is a thing that is taught to us by our previous generations, so our parents and their parents. So the thing is school. You have to go to school. You have to get high grades and then you have to go to university and you have to get higher grades. Everybody is being taught or told the same thing. Education is the key. And I don't necessarily disagree with that, but I just think that education is the key or maybe not the key, but is the roadway to get to the door. The door won't open but it will get you to the door. I think personality opens the door. So with, 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 with actually the school system in Jamaica, we are very smart. We are very intelligent people. We're very marketed people. But if you have 50,000 people with a first class honors degree applying for a position that, is only, that only needs one person, it it's like it doesn't make any sense. We don't have the, the we don't have the the employment pool to to hire everybody. So I think a better use of human resources, in my per, in my opinion, is that we should use our online resources like most of the overseas people. Like you can learn to program online for two hundred dollars a year. A web design. Yeah, but you can't even go further that. You can't learn to build apps for 200 US dollars a year. Certificate for $239 and make 1,800 USD a month. Don't ask me how I do that. Go and watch my <laughs> channel, please. <laughs> because I don't think it's our fault. I just think it's, 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 it's the information that our parents didn't get. And, and, you know and, and the popularity that was not on those what you call it no not popular jobs because people look doctor 
doctors, the normal doctor in Jamaica make like what, 100 and 100 to 150,000 per month when they just a start it's out. No man, like yes, they come on TV. What they are? <laughs> like one hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, I know like, about that, but I thought they e- make more than that. Exactly. So it's like it doesn't make sense for everybody to be going to school. As I said, if you want to be an engineer, you have to go to school. If you want to be a doctor, you have to go to school. But if you want to be, for instance, a, a, um, TikToker. A, a TikToker, a programmer, like we shouldn't shun those things. Certain jobs, you just need to have work. You need to have a portfolio. Like if I'm going to be a programmer, I'm going to work on developing a portfolio of my jobs and bring that to the interview and say, listen, this is what I can do. But you know what? I have something to add to that as well. Mm-hmm. I don't think the issue is everybody trying to be doctors and, and mm-hmm. I think as well that the issue is that it's very taboo in Jamaica to pursue more than one thing. People exactly. make it look like a bad thing. Like you're doing mm-hmm. too many things. How are you going to like, I can be a singing doctor. I can be mm-hmm. um, the TikTok lawyer. And I think exactly. a lot of corporate persons are realizing that now because YouTube is not specific to one, one career field or one industry. And I think like, for example, if I have a dental practice, why not start a YouTube channel about dental care and this right here, the life this. of a dentist and blah, blah, blah. And because YouTube is so broad, mm-hmm. you're literally getting millions of views from people all around the country. How do you think Dr. Miami became so famous? You think his surgeries, mm-hmm. yeah, we know his surgeries are top here, yeah. but they're not like that top here. Dr. Miami is a social media brand. Exactly. You know exactly. So exactly. I don't think the issue is just certain industries. I think mm-hmm. the issue is that we make it look like a bad thing to pursue more than one career choice. So for I, me, I, I like think, cooking. Yeah. I like talking, which is why I have a podcast. And I like <laughs> talking about money. So, I mean, and then here in Jamaica, I have an online business. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. The issue is, though, is when you're not producing quality work because you're doing too many things, which is a separate topic. But Mm -hmm. in my opinion, once you have a team, a good Mm -hmm. team that can assist you with these things, you can always do more than one thing. You get what I mean? And we're we're not, we're not taught, we're not taught taking risks in Jamaica. We're not taught about diversification. Exactly. The the only, the only thing that I see that doesn't get much fight is investing like mm-hmm. most corporate people don't fight investing but <clears throat> like for example us youtubers and i've seen it on mm-hmm. social media i've seen a couple of my friends do it they mock youtubers so like mm-hmm. if they're posting a story they're like hey guys welcome back to my channel yeah like, kind of a mock thing but if they had any idea how much youtubers abroad make they'd probably mm-hmm. start a channel tomorrow but you don't the thing is like it's all about attention and eyeballs. And I'm going to bring Kal- Kalila Reynolds for a case study right here. So Kalila doesn't have the biggest channel in Jamaica. She might have the biggest channel in the niche of finance. But when you compare her to like a quite Perry or, or, you know, those vloggers, those couple of vloggers that have 300,000 subscribers and get like 100,000 views per day, the money that they get to me, is nothing compared to what Kalila can market. Because Kalila doesn't necessarily depend on YouTube um, revenue because she's creating a brand that sponsorships or sponsors want to to come on her program. and the finance CPM too compared Mm -hmm. to finance CPM. A lot of people look down on finance channels because they have a small number, but the reality... Mm -hmm. The reality, if you're listening mm-hmm. to this, is that finance CPM, and that is the money you make per ad, if you don't know what CPM is, is a mm-hmm. lot higher in the finance and business industry. And you know why? Look at it this way. I know why. I just... It's <laughs> like, 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 I want to see if have the same answer. Go we, ahead. We, as finance nerds, are more to make a purchase or actually click on the ad that is being shown we are more right. to take action because if a bank comes up on kalila's video they'll be like 
um, get, get 5% that. per annum by joining JMMB. Yes. We are going to, wow, 5% on our money? Yes, we are going to go to JMMB, to NCB, to Scotia, to yes. Victoria Mutual. We are going to sign up. We are going to take action. If somebody's selling a program, learn to trade Forex, and they seem credible, we are going to be more... We we'll call it no to respond to the ad. To respond, so that's why advertisers will pay more money to get their ads on a finance video. That's why I think the CPMs are so, so high. So, guys, how it works is, um, my company Shop Nak and Beauty. I want to run an ad, so I pay YouTube a thousand USD, um, to run ads. I let YouTube know my target audience, right? So if my target audience are persons who buy natural soaps, natural hair products, YouTube is more likely to run that ad on probably a vlog channel than a finance channel. Versus if I own a bank, YouTube is more likely to run that bank ad on a more business oriented channel because I would have gotten the most optimization mm -hmm. from that audience. So, um, I mean, no exactly. disrespect to vloggers and, and because they make good money too. I just think for YouTube AdSense, business channels make more money mm -hmm. because lifestyle vloggers get a lot of sponsorships a lot of yeah, they, they, they are volume based so for yeah. for lifestyle vloggers to make the same money as a finance channel that has good viewership they have to have volume based and they can get wicked sponsors too wicked sponsors like sometimes yeah, the hair that they wear, the earrings exactly. that they wear, it's all free and it's all sponsored. And apart from getting those free items, they're getting paid to actually put it in the mm -hmm. video. Plus, yeah. them can sell back some of them free items at all. Mm -hmm. That's what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, I mean, you mentioned Kalila, and I'm very glad you brought her up because my next question is um, with this whole YouTube thing growing, because I don't think YouTube like for channel wise, I don't think it was always popular in Jamaica. So what, what, how do you, where do you see finance channels going? Because uh, to me, I think there's only like a handful. We have learn, grow and invest. Mm -hmm. Big them up. There's a young man. I can't remember his Jamie, name. Jamie Radcliffe. He's kind of dark. Mm -hmm. And he usually mm -hmm. analyzes the market and, um, puts it on youtube i'm subscribed to him but i can't look for it right now i don't know his name yeah if anything if anything let's put it in the description because yeah i would def I definitely think, give him a watch think there's a lot of finance mm -hmm. channels here in jamaica so where do you see that going all right i think the space is growing um this trend of 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 people wanting to be entrepreneurs and people wanting to have generational wealth and actually invest their income people want money because younger persons are seeing that one stream of income is close to having no stream of income right. so when they're seeing that and they know that not everybody will have the the potential to own their own business investing is a path that is open to everybody it's not just the rich man's game anymore anybody can invest so they are seeing it as an opportunity. And just like everybody is being interesting now and the space is growing, I think it's the same with the finance channels. The space is going to grow. And one indicator that I look on, on the space actually growing, I just watch Kalila's videos. Like if, I, if she can get a thousand views in the first day of publishing, then yes, the, the space is growing. Though. If the right. next day it goes to 2000, I say, okay, so there is potential there. It is growing. And I watch the pace of her channel. How fast is it growing? Because Jamaica is known for, Jamaica and YouTube, YouTube space is known for having the, the mix up and the happy Our and the vibes and the, the island, the island culture. The island are, are the gimmicks and the joke you know type, of, type well of atmosphere, too, right? you know? You know that hmm? does extremely well too, right? The Jamaica. What, travel? The Jamaican channels, just like yeah. um, the island life and stuff. I found the channel I was referring to. So mm -hmm. his name is um, Personal Portfolio Watchers. Hub. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Right. PPW. So, yes. Yes. So yes. His, his subscribe channel, to him too. I don't know. Subscribe to his channel, guys. I don't know a lot of finance channels, but I, I see it becoming. I think the more we learn about YouTube. Mm hmm. I, I I expect to see a lot more um, finance channels here. Yeah, man, it's it's a learning it's a learning game and it's a learning process. It's just for us to stick it through, 
and actually market the space because we have people, we have eyeballs, we have Jamaicans here and we have Jamaicans abroad. Right. And they want to invest in our country. So it's just up to us to put out the information and let them know it's possible. Yeah, because even with my um, real estate videos, I have a lot of persons in Canada, the United mm -hmm. Kingdom. One mm -hmm. person even mentioned that, you know, the value of the house in Jamaica, she could get, I think you said a lot more features in the UK. So I think mm -hmm. persons are interested mm -hmm. in the Jamaica market, in the Jamaican stock market, but there wasn't always a lot of content surrounding the stock. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're going to switch things up and get into your corporate life a little bit. So yeah, as man. I mentioned before, guys, Demetrius is an industrial engineer. He works at a power plant. Mm -hmm. So I want to know exactly what you do in the days because I watched your mini vlog, which was the life mm -hmm. of a 27 year old, that same video. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times when you upload stories, it's at night. So is it that you work late at night or something? Because that must be really hard and then being a content creator on mm -hmm. top of it so all right so so i work 12 hour shifts oh. and my sh my shifts are basically 8 a.m to 8 p.m and uh, my night shifts are 8 p.m to 8 a.m so yeah that's it one thing with being a shift worker yes you get you get a lot i would say a lot of day offs but you get day offs that aren't regular to the normal people so it's not a monday to friday thing it's a monday tuesday wednesday thing you oh. break thursday friday and you come back saturday sunday night and then you break and you, you work, work for four days weekends. yeah yeah i mean i, I work, work on weekends but it's by choice weekends holidays anything oh lord if it's my it's wedding day <laughs> my online job if it's not like an international holiday i don't, mm -hmm. I don't know. yeah man, if a christmas if it's, if it's christmas day and i'm on schedule to come in i have to come in and if somebody calls out sick i better answer that phone and come to work that's oh. that's the responsibility so as a basically i'm a plant operator at the plant oh. i have an industrial engineering degree so, but hold on hold on hold on yeah you make over 100k right yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Um, 12 hours? Huh? 12 hours? Yeah, yeah. Like, you're already giving me over 100,000 Jamaican dollars. And even 100,000 Jamaican dollars is small, in my opinion. If, it's, uh, if, it, if I was working 12 hours, 100,000 Jamaican dollars, I, I see where I could invest my time to get better rewards. Really? If if that is maybe getting a work permit to go overseas, bussing tables, serving people, starting an online business, go full head. To me, I don't discriminate any job. I just need to know that yeah, it is money. rewarding me for my efforts. So if it's, as my father always say, if you're going to be a, a, a garbage man, be the best garbage man. If you're going to be a street sweeper, be the best street sweeper. So I don't discriminate jobs. I just need to know that the monetary aspect is up there and it is rewarding me for my efforts. So as it meant, like doing my job, I basically work at a power plant and the power plant just produces power, electricity to go on the JPS grid, which is Jamaica Public Services grid. And just to make sure that your house have, have, have electricity. So I maintain the machines. I keep them in working order. And if something is broken, we tend to fix it or we tend to you know, just do our best to maintain the electricity on the island. So how do you balance that with YouTube? Because you do post consistently. I tried to. The last two weeks was, was pretty rough and it was because I had a lot of problems um, filming, uh, internet prob internet down, so I was one week late in editing. But when it pertains to me, when I'm at work and it's down time, I do get, I write down video ideas. So I schedule my day. I live by a schedule, even if it's at work. Me too. I write down everything. I was like, all right, if I can put six hours of hard work in i must can get two hours to do my thing so if i'm even on lunch break for an hour i write down video ideas then after i write on a video idea i do research and after do i do a research then i start to write a youtube script okay. so as soon as i get like a day off or even 
after I reach home, like after a 12 hour shift, and you know, so you're not reach home, eight o'clock on the dot, mm-hmm. your shift, the person has to come and relieve you. So maybe you're getting home at 10. <laughs> so that is, that is technically 14 hours. And then I spend like maybe a one hour when I get home, just filming pieces and pieces of my videos. So most of my videos are not one takes. There, I film piece today, I film piece the other day, and I film okay. piece the other day. And then by the end of the so week, I just try to compile everything. You put the same shirt make... on? And then yeah. You... yeah, man. I've never done that. <laughs> I put I out my I suit. I do that, though, because I wear makeup and all of that. Mm-hmm. I don't think no, I, I put out I put out my suit and then I rewatch the video and try to to yeah, fix myself back and get that same energy. So coffee is my um, best friend. Coffee I, and Red I Bull is my best content. friend. I batch content. Yesterday I did mm-hmm. two YouTube videos. So that's I what wish I, I could do that. Like that's if I make one video in a day, that's it. Like if I make one video for the day, yeah, man, that energy is is so, gone. So you do that. You do YouTube and then you also have an active investment portfolio. So how like. <laughs> how do you how do you balance all of that and i want to know what are you like invested in right now mm-hmm. um right recently i got you know some of main events but i want you to answer the question first so like you do active investments right mm-hmm. how do you keep track of all of that well people always see me and think i'm crazy because i'm either checking my bank account or checking my investment port- portfolio at least 10 minutes 10 minute intervals every day. That is just me. It just makes me feel comfortable seeing every, every movement my money makes. Mm-hmm. But I generally take at least one day out of the month and just analyze my stocks, how they are, just the movement of the stock, how it is performing. And then I decide, should I buy more of this stock? Should I sell some stocks if it's in profit or I just decide what actions to do. But I use common sense investing. I don't, I don't go extremely in-depth and looking at all the ratios and looking at all the balance sheets and looking at all the prospectors. Like Social media is a powerful thing. You see a lot of people speaking about a certain stock. Then that's an indicator to research that stock. It has to have some reason why people are talking about it. And researching it can be simply watching a YouTube video on the company, going on their website and reading what that company does, going to the supermarket and see, oh, so Grace have a lot of can aki on the shelf and, mm-hmm. and Grace is exporting a lot and Grace have built a new factory. Yeah, I, I think I can invest in Grace. And then for the next like, month, you just look at their price and see how it is behaving. And then you decide when you can get into it. If the price is okay for you and you're planning to hold for as for a long period that's how i invest i jump in i don't tend to sell a lot i jump in if i see this stock staying around for like next 10 years i actually made like a small blunder and if i had um just waited like a, like 24 hours i would be mm-hmm. in profit but i got um, about a couple thousand units of main events right because mm-hmm. it has been trending up it will fall a little bit but it will the the majority of the chart is trending up Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, with curfew and everything ending, main event being an events company, it's mm-hmm. kind of automatic that they will have an increase in sales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. so I got main event right, and then the next day it went down by like two dollars or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow! If I just like bought the next wait, day, yeah, the next day <laughs> you'd I get it at a discount I price. A, I got it at a nice price. I think I got it at um five forty three. Mm-hmm. But when I the next day it went down to if if it wasn't three eighty one it was four eighty one mm-hmm. and then it bounced back up to um five forty something so I was like oh, if I just waited like twenty four more hours but what 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 was their years high though like because it it doesn't like a stock will always move when you buy it it's it's going to either go the down and I've it's seen... and it's going to either go up. The so as long as you can, as long, as long as you can gauge that high, the year is high, and the year is low, like once you can gauge that and get in, you're okay. Because it, if it's approaching the year's high, there is a chance that maybe it will fall. Yes. So, yeah. I think the highest that I saw it at, I'm actually pulling up the chart. Hold on. So the highest that it's had was back 
in what month is this? It was in June. Mm -hmm. So this is looking like I'm on my iPad, so it's not showing me the figures, but it looks like six dollars something or five six dollars uh, something. And yeah, but if I want four dollars, four dollars, um, uh, no, five forty three. I got five forty three. Okay. But majority of the chart has been like it would be like this, and then it goes up. Uh -huh. But it, it most of it is going up. Well, I haven't done um, any, any. I haven't done any um research on Meg. Main, main events. Yeah, main events. So um, I, I couldn't tell you what my thoughts are on that stock. Another another stock but, that I was having an issue with was um THJ because mm -hmm. it after I after like I feel price I think it went down. Yeah, man, it, it, after, it hasn't, it hasn't IPO crossed price, IPO COVID. price. <laughs> after IPO COVID. price, COVID hit. But, you know, we're, we're opening again, and mm -hmm. that should be... Um, the, the only good thing that you can look forward with, with TJ is that it's not going anywhere. It's not like they can just dig it's up the road not. and pack it up and in a suitcase. All again. Yeah, but it's not like they can just dig up the road and, and bring it away and be like, oh, we're closing business. It's going they to be around to forever. I'm kind yeah. of mad about that, though. They yeah, man, the, the, the toll is going to be raised because you know they're going to try to build they have a the, contract. No, they have the, a man, the Mandeville if Legan it's, thing. If it's not every year, mm -hmm. I think, is it every year they, they, they have a contract to raise it? It is a contract. They can raise oh. it. Free. I'm, not sure, I'm not sure about the contract. I'm, in a, I'm, in not, I'm not sure how the contract is now, now that they sold all shares to the Jamaican public. I'm not sure how that contract is right now. It's been a while since I actually look into it. Well, it moved It moved from 260. It's now 290 for small vehicles like myself. Yeah, man. Port more and That's a big jump. And I think 150 for me at the Mayfield. As a consumer, like, it's ridiculous because you're literally spending 600 Jamaican dollars just to get to work and come home. And that doesn't include gas. And that doesn't include gas. And most Jamaicans <laughs> are making under a hundred thousand dollars, but exactly you know, right now I'm thinking maybe to just sell their card and buy a buy a Jeep Wrangler and so we can drive move. the back so no. we can drive the back no. roads. <laughs> move, move, because at this point, it, mm -hmm. one more is ridiculous. Well, it's I'm currently I'm currently I'm currently living in Old Harbor and I'm I working know. I work in Clarendon. But you have so, to look for a toll. Yeah, my toll raised from hundred and thirty to a hundred and fifty. 50? But yeah, but the efficiency of it takes me like 50 minutes to get to work on the tool. But if I drove the back road, it would take me like 30 minutes plus the wear and tear on the car. So because well, we the back roads generally, yeah, in Portmore and Based I don't have a the choice. The main entrance and they, that's what I, that's real politics if you ask me. They yeah, took man, the Portmore, main get the, and get fastest entrance yeah. and they put a big ass toll. And then if it is that you want to avoid the toll, you got to go all the way to Mandala Highway, which to me is an additional hour, not mm -hmm. even 30 minutes, an hour. Yeah, man, it, 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 it I'm really giving a hard pill for swallow there, put more legs still, man. I get anyway. it back. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be wrapping up now. So, Demetrius, if you had, you know, one piece of advice to give your younger self, we ask every mm -hmm. guest this question, mm -hmm. what would it be? Youngest advice to myself is to learn a skill. Instead of spending your time trying to, 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 to think that education is going to be the key and trying to get a degree in a high-paying job or a high-paying field, focus on a skill that is marketable. So whether that is being a, con a video creator, a website developer, uh, anything in tech, or if you want to become a farmer, try to be the best. So my thing is develop a skill that is marketable and dive headfirst into that skill until you are known for that skill. Because if I spend those four years that I went to university while pursuing that degree and also developing a skill, I would have four years experience in that skill out of college already. So that, that, that would be one thing I would tell myself. Save more money, <laughs> invest more, and learn a skill. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And um, go ahead. This is your moment to plug yourself. So let the people know your Instagram, your mm -hmm. YouTube channel name, any other platform that you want to plug. Go ahead. All right. So I'm mostly active on Instagram. Uh, my uh, Instagram name is Demetrius Fairman. Or you can type Demetrius underscore Fairman. I'm on YouTube as Demetrius Fairman also. <laughs> so if you want anything about investing in the stock market, if you want to see my personal development in the stock market, because I'm not necessarily teaching 
although I have a stock market for beginner scores. I am a beginner myself. So they say it's always best to learn from beginners because right. you see them make the mistakes. So if, if you want to avoid the mistakes, you can watch my channel because I make a ton of mistakes. And if you want to see anything travel related and uh, maybe occasionally a body transformation or lifestyle, things like that, you can just watch my channel over on YouTube. All right, guys, and I'm going to put the link for his channel. Man, I have a lot of links to put in the description. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put a link for his channel and his Instagram in the description box. Demetrius, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. That's the end of our episode, guys. I'll see you guys next week. Take care of yourself and goodbye.